<laughs> All right, here we go. Quiet, please. This is section 4.5. Uh, this is math one. Guys, guys, guys. You're on tape, no less. 4.5. Uh, we're talking about segment addition and angle addition. Uh, you've already copied down the box at the top of page 217. Uh, we're not talking about proofs, so we're going to talk about postulates, theorems, and then these two postulates. A postulate is something that is accepted without uh, proof. You don't need to prove it, okay? It is an accepted uh, statement. Um, there's really nothing more that needs to be said about that. A postulate is a rule that is accepted without proof. Any questions on what a postulate is? Okay, very good. The segment addition postulate is very easy. Uh, it says if B is in between A and C. So if B is in between A and C, write that down. Okay? Then AB plus BC is equal to AC. AB plus BC is equal to AC. Well, that's kind of intuitive. That this amount plus this amount is equal to the total amount. Okay? For example, 5 and 3, AC is equal to 8. Okay? That's intuitive. That that amount plus that amount is equal to 8. Well, what happens if I put x3, x plus 1... And this is 8x minus 2. I'm not, we're not going to solve this. But you get the idea. You would do it if it had algebra in it, meaning variables. You would do it exactly the same. You would say this amount plus this amount is equal to the total amount. Sometimes they give you the total amount, right? Sometimes they may say that this amount's 18. Solve for x. And you would have to solve for x. Okay? You may get a fraction. You may have to change it into a decimal. Whatever. Any questions on the segment addition posture? Very straightforward. All right. Um, then the next one is the angle addition postulate. It goes right along with 4.5. I'm sorry, the segment addition. They are very similar. It says if P is in the interior of RST. So here are two angles. Actually, it's three angles, right? You got this angle, this angle, and then the big angle. But it says if P is in the interior of angle RST, so it's in the middle of these two angles, then it says this angle, angle 1, plus angle 2, I'm just using numbers to make it easy, angle 1 plus angle 2 will equal angle RST, the big angle. The angle addition postulate says that if I add up this amount, to this amount, then I get the total amount. Okay? And like I said, that's self-explanatory. It's kind of common sense. Okay? If I put a problem up there and when you walked in the door today, you probably would be able to figure that out. That that amount plus that amount equals the total. Okay? An example problem would be they might put a box right there and they might say 2x and x. And they might say solve for x. And that's all the information that they get. Now, how would you solve that? Add them up and set them equal to what? Zero. Not zero. 90. Why 90? Because it's, right it's a right angle, right? The big angle is a right angle. We just got done saying this amount plus this amount equals the big angle. So you would say 2x plus x is equal to 90. Sorry, 90. 3x is equal to 90. What is x equal? 30. 30. Right, you would divide both sides by 3, x equals 30. Does that make sense that this angle is 30 and this angle is 60? Yeah. And they add up to 90 degrees? What do we call the relationship between those two angles? If they add up to 90 degrees, what's the relationship? Complementary. Complementary. Write that down if you didn't know that. If they add up to 90 degrees, then they are complementary. If you didn't know that, off the top of your head, write that down. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Okay, questions? All right, flip the page and go to 218. I'll do it up here on the squat board. Flip the page and go to 218. You've got a box up there with some theorems. Okay, congruence of segments and congruence of angles. We need to copy those down.
Should be copying these down. I'm writing them on the board as well. Copy down, I won't talk about it. You should do that one and that one. I combined it. I wanted you to see how similar they are. You can do it like I did it, or you can do it up like the box on 218. Either way. All right, let's talk about it. Reflexive. When you think of reflexive, what's the root word? Reflect. 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 What reflects? What's something in the real world that reflects your image? A mirror. A mirror. Write that down. Isn't this side of the congruence symbol the same as this side? Yes, yes, this is reflexive. They are a mirror image of one another. AB is congruent to AB. That's a segment. You're saying that this segment is congruent to itself. That is a reflexive property. The same thing is true with angles. Angle A is congruent to angle A. One variation of this that's a little tricky is they might say angle ABC is congruent to angle CBA. Is that still reflexive? Yeah, yeah it's just, it's kind of confusing because people over here want it to say angle ABC. Well, CBA and ABC are the same. It's the middle letter that's important. Make sure you have this copy down for reflex. That's a little tricky, tricky. Okay? So the, middle letter to... the middle letter would have to be exactly the same. And the other two have to be the same, but the middle letter is what's important. That tells you your vertex. Okay? Good question. All right, so here we go down to symmetric. What's different about symmetric? How is it written? It's written as a, as a conditional statement. It's an if and a then. Write that down. If, then. Write in your note card, how are you going to tell whether or not it's symmetric? One way is to see an if, then. If AB is uh, congruent to BC, then BC is congruent to AB. They flip-flop around the uh, congruent symbol. Same thing with angles. If angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B is congruent to angle A. This is the symmetric property of congruence for segments and angles. Okay? Now let's finish it up. Transitive. How are you going to know that it's transitive? What's a clue that it's going to be the transitive property? Three parts. It has three parts. If this and this then this. That's three parts. If this and this, then this. Transitive property always has three parts. Write that down. If AB equals CD and CD equals EF, then the first one equals the last one. 
AB is congruent to EF. Same thing down here. If angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A has to be congruent to angle C by the transitive property. That's how we say it, right? That's a true statement by the transitive property. Yes. Say again. That's 10 note cards. 10 note cards right there? Yep. There you go. Piece of cat. Questions? Any questions on these properties? All right, let's look at some examples. Look at some examples on page 220. Still in your textbook. Flip to 220, and let's look at some examples. Everybody flip in their textbook. Get your textbook out. No textbook? Oh, my gosh. 